Well, we thought we'd talk about something that would really kind of expand your mind and do exactly what's going on here and, and how it's so much bigger than what a lot of you realize and that we're such at the infancy stage. Each one of you have a massive amount of opportunity in front of you. And so to frame this up, who's been in Bitcoin for more than three years? What about five years? And if you've been in it for more than five years, are you still learning new things all the time? Right? Because it goes so much deeper. And one of the problems that we have, especially for people that are like really smart, is they go, oh, yeah, I get that. I get that. And they quickly dismiss it. Right? But if you have an open mind, you're inquisitive, you're always learning. You're always discovering these new things. And so part of what uh, Brandon and I want to talk about tonight, framing this up, is that Bitcoin is not just a new technology. It's something much bigger, something much bigger than that. And it's not just a new technology. It's a technological revolution. So what is the difference? So a new technology is something that extends the life cycle of a previous technological revolution. So it might take something like a iPhone, for example, as a new piece of technology. And what it did is it took two pieces of technology, a computer and a phone, and put, I mean, I'm sorry, a computer and a phone, put them together, and it came up with this. And it's cool. But it's not a technological revolution. Technological revolutions are different in two main ways. And one, they change the course of humanity. And two, they drive financial markets. Okay? Now, there's only been five in the last about 300 years. There's only been five. All right? And so we'll go through them, and then we're going to chop this up, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of break it down, and then we can do some Q&A on this. But... To kind of frame this, there's been five. So the first one was in the late 1700s. We had the Industrial Revolution. That's when it all started. About 300 years ago, this whole world was dirt. There was no machines. There was no planes. There was no nothing. All right? Everything that we had, almost all the abundance in the world came in the last couple hundred years. And so it started with that. And we had a machine that could do the work of 5,000 men. But what are those 5,000 men going to do? Well, it turns out science, medicine, things like that. About... Approximately 50 years later, we had steam engines and railways. Instead of horsepower, manpower, now we had machines that could move stuff across continents. It changed the course of humanity. About 50 years later, we had electricity and steel. Now, those are, what, they, what those are, those new technological revolutions are new building blocks that allows us to build new things that we didn't have before. So steel allowed us to build skyscrapers before we could build two or three stories. We could build bridges. So it was those things. Um, we had electricity. About 50 years later, we had oil, automobiles, and mass production, 1908. About 50 years later, 60 years later, 1971 was the age of the microprocessor, which brought us telecommunications and the internet and Zoom and the iPhone and TikTok and all that. And we're about 50 years later from that, about 2022, 2023, and there's another technological revolution happening. And that's where we believe Bitcoin fits in. It's not just a new technology, but it's a technological revolution. Now remember, two things, they change the course of humanity, and two, they drive financial markets. So what have all the financial markets been driven by over the last 50, 60 years? Telecom, internet, computer. Before that, Ford, GM, GE. Before that, oil, steel. See how that works? The other thing is that uh, they're always somewhat predictable in which a new technology or technological revolution has to have a first killer application. How do we use it? So when electricity came out, what was the first killer application, anybody? A light bulb. So what is this electricity thing, Brandon? I don't get it. Well, it's sort of like a digital candle, right? Um, and it was that, but it became so much more. And so they have this, uh, this killer application. So Bitcoin today has a killer application, money, and it's changing money. And we believe that it can change the course of humanity through changing incentive structures and drive all financial markets for a long time. So that's how big this is. We're at the beginning of this. And so let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Awesome. Yeah, what's up, guys? Happy to be here. Um, quick commentary on the scale of those technological revolutions. Today in America, the average individual consumes 2,000 calories internally, right? That's our food. Um, but through this advanced technology, we harness about 200,000 calories per person. That's using advanced forms of energy like dense oil and machinery and things like that. So that's a huge exponential curve that we're all harnessing today. 
And when I think about this, like asking the question, like what can Bitcoin change, right? It's a very hard question to ask because it is a new thing. It's a novel thing. It sort of disrupts all the systems we see. And Mark and I talk a lot about cycles. And I think right now where we are in humanity's cycle is that we look around at our institutions and our institutions are decaying. We do not trust them anymore. And for good reason, right? The majority of the scaffolding of our, of our society today was forged at the end of World War II. Uh, or right around there. That's FDIC, that's World Bank, that's uh, NATO, the IMF, unemployment insurance, uh, Bretton Woods, obviously, right? The list goes on. So those institutions were formed, forged in a previous era. And in that era, you, let's say it made sense, right? That, that fits the, the needs at the time, the technology at the time. Fast forward 80 years, those institutions have decayed um, just through entropy, through uh, corruption, through various different means, technological changes, right? They don't fit the current, the current system. And humans are starting to notice this. We are pushing back on our institutions. Um, the economic system's not working. The political system's not working. Who do we trust? And right during that crucible of, of change in our species enters this Bitcoin thing. Right, this anonymous guy just drops a white paper on a, a pretty much no-name mailing list, and okay, that that piece of paper, that piece of code, went out and hijacked the minds of millions of people. It bootstrapped itself uh, to a trillion dollars at one point. There's no marketing officer, there's no CEO, there's no master plan. Right, just out pops this thing, and now we get to, to grapple with it, and we start to notice that humans really like this thing. It solves problems for us. And it might even solve some of those enormous institutional problems, right? It for sure solves the problem of savings if you're living in a, in a regime with a crappy currency. It solves payments if you're in a country that can't send money abroad or you have fragmented systems or you don't have an identity or you're per persona non grata in the eyes of your government. Um, it solves energy problems because we have the need to uh, spread cheap, low-cost, high-density energy around the world, and Bitcoin helps us bootstrap that. Um, but it just also might help us replace the institutions that our society is built upon. Um, maybe we don't need a central bank run by you know, a dozen white dudes in a room steering the global economy. Uh, maybe we can push that, that job to an open source protocol that we all contribute to um, that doesn't have the ability to be captured politically. Um, like all previous monetary systems have done. And if that is true, then we can have a new monetary system, a new trust layer, a new uh, value system for the world that doesn't break every so often because it gets corrupted. And if that's true, that's a new foundation to build. You mentioned steel. Uh, maybe Bitcoin is the, the steel of money, right? Maybe that allows us to build bridges, which makes Manhattan what it is, builds the skyscrapers. And so, yeah, it is that new fundamental particle or building block for a society that's very hard to imagine. Yeah. Um, we just have to speculate on that.